now. She, yeah, you show. should go. Yeah, you should go. Because you just killed your boyfriend. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. We begin with new details in a deadly stabbing that happened inside a luxury high rise in Edgewater. Tonight, not only are we hearing from the victim's family, but we're also getting the other side of the story. CBS 4's Joe Gorcho joins us live from Edgewater now with the latest on this ongoing investigation. Joe? Elliot Lauren, a once quiet part of Edgewater, tucked away at one Paraiso, is now at the center of a deadly police investigation. Tonight, we share the woman's name from Sunday night's domestic dispute, ending 27-year-old Christian Abumaselli's life. Her name, Courtney Clunny. In his statement sent to CBS4, Courtney Clunny's lawyer says, this is a tragedy for all involved, but it was not criminal conduct. Courtney was defending herself, and the investigation will reveal exactly that. Abu Museli was stabbed on Sunday night inside one Parisio in Edgewater. He died on the way to the hospital. He shared a home with Clenny in Miami. She's an Instagram star with more than 2 million followers. How his family found out? They flew in from Texas, unfortunately learned of his death when a medical examiner contacted them uh, requesting permission to donate the organs. Speaking today, the family, joined by their lawyer, demands justice for Abu Maselli's death. All they're looking for is justice. We know the suspect uh, that was involved in this incident has not been arrested. Miami police's preliminary investigation determined that both Abu Maselli and Clunny had been involved in a physical altercation. Abu Maselli's brother said he wants to see an arrest. I do believe she is a killer, the killer and she does need to be arrested. Police are still investigating, and Abu Maselli's family met with the state attorney today. While the investigation continues, Abu Maselli's family mourns the loss of their loved one, a young man about to turn 28, who they say was kind and full of aspiration. Devastation doesn't quite describe what my family's experiencing right now. And at last check, Miami PD has not made an arrest relating to Christian Abumaselli's death as they continue to investigate the circumstances surrounding the stabbing at one Paraiso. Joe Gorcho, CBS Tonight. I'm late to the story. I'm pretty sure black social media has talked about the story 10 times over. But I wanted to add my two cents in because I find it very, very interesting that after she killed her boyfriend, she's hanging out at hotels like nothing happened. She may be mentally unstable. It looks like two million people because she has a social media following of two million plus people. Two million plus people get their advice from someone who is obviously mentally unstable. Now, Christian Ambuseli, 27 years of age, into cryptocurrency, successful, had a entire life ahead of him cut short over domestic violence. Now, I've seen a news clip of a neighbor saying that he's seen Christian beat up his girlfriend in their living room. Now you have friends of theirs saying that she always hit him. Now, maybe he did not hit her in public. Maybe he put his hands on her only in private. It's obvious they had a dysfunctional relationship. We don't know exactly who was more violent in the relationship, but we do know that we have a dead man because he was stabbed in his chest by his girlfriend, who's 
behaving like she is mentally insane, unstable. I don't think she's playing like she's crazy. I think she really is crazy. And if she can prove that she was standing her ground, Florida has the stand your ground law. If she can prove, if there's cameras in the home, if there's cameras in their home, and before he was stabbed, he was beating on her, she will get off scot-free. Now, there's a constant theme. Every time a black person is in a relationship with a white person, when the black person dies, the coroner, nor detectives ever get in contact with the black person's family members to let the family know that their loved one is deceased. This story about Christian is the exact same one. His family did not get a call until they went to go visit him and the hospital called and asked, can they donate his organs? Oh, he's healthy. Can we donate his organs? They're like, what? Oh, he's dead. You didn't know he's dead? He was stabbed by his girlfriend? Yeah, it's all over the news here in Miami. So authorities did not contact Christian's family. Now, we've seen this in quite a few swirling relationships that went tragic. You've had black women who were in relationships with Mr. Clean end up dead and the Mr. Clean was never, ever charged nor questioned Just another dead black body. Now, I haven't seen too many stories about white women killing their black boyfriends. You don't really hear too many stories like that. You often hear stories about white men killing their black girlfriend or setting his wife on fire, his black wife on fire. So... I'm sure you're going to have opportunists who always peddle the black man and white woman relationships are dysfunctional. They will exploit this as much as they can. And this goes to show black people, listen, you're dating interracially. You're flossing this person interracially. You're bragging. You're telling other black people, look, I got someone lighter. I got a white person. If something happened, your body isn't even respected enough. Your humanity, your humanity has no value. Now, she may have, in fact, stabbed her boyfriend because he was hitting her not knowing she was going to kill him, not knowing he was going to bleed to death, died on his way to the hospital. And again, if she can prove that he was laying hands on her, then her crazy ass will not go to jail. Her name is Cleany. She's 25 years old. She knows at the age of 25 that... She can claim, stand your ground, not go to jail, and get another rich black guy. She said she liked rich black guys. She has a fetish. She has a craving for rich black guys. So she knows that she can take out one rich black guy and get another one. Hell, She's white for crying out loud. Trust me, she will have another rich black man. She will have another middle class black man. She will have another black man. 
there will be black men who know she killed her boyfriend. Not any boyfriend, a black boyfriend. And there will be black men who will still date her, still want to sleep with her. She knows this. The video clip you've seen in the beginning of this video of the white woman telling Cleany to get out of here. You killed your boyfriend. If that, if that was black men recording her, they would have been like, hey, baby, let me get your number. Want to hang out? What you doing tonight? How you uh, feeling? Man. Your boyfriend show was tripping. You beautiful. He should never, ever put his hand on a white queen. Listen, if white people don't punish her, if the judicial system don't punish her, she will not be punished. Period. She will get away with murder. Just like these Mr. Cleans are getting away with murder with these swirlers. I think that black people should take these stories into accountability when they date interracially. There's a high percentage chance that if something happened, you will always be the perpetrator. You will always be the problem. This big black man was beating on this innocent white girl. She had to find a way to get this big black man off this small, petite, innocent white girl. She had to stab him. She had to act quickly. Because if he would have struck her, he could have killed her. He could have knocked her out. So she was afraid of her life and she stabbed him, not knowing that she was going to kill him. The big black boogeyman story. The detectives, the police said, you know what? That's the story and case is closed. We're not even going to call his parents. He has the audacity to put his hands on a white girl. If his family finds out he's dead, they're going to have to find out on their own. But the hospital ended up calling, asking, is his family willing to donate his organs? So black people should take stories like this into serious Serious consideration. Because don't have this attitude like it can't happen to you. No matter what happens, you're looked at as the problem. If something goes wrong, you're looked at as the problem. While the family is trying to get answers, find out what happened, she's back on the streets at a hotel hanging out. She may be living at that hotel. Who knows? Maybe she wanted to take a break in the lobby. I don't know. But she's back out. She's not going to face any charges. If you think she's going to face charges, forget about it. Don't hold your breath. Don't forget that he was living with her. He moved in with her. So he was in her home beating her up. He was in her home being abused. So that plays a big, big role in all of this also. She's a OnlyFans model. She's not a OnlyFans hooker. She's not having sex on OnlyFans, as far as I know, she's 
on OnlyFans because she's a model. She models in lingerie. So she's a little different as far as what goes on on OnlyFans. But if he's a rich black guy, then why did he move in with her? I don't know why he did not have his own spot. When something happens that he doesn't like, he can easily get into his vehicle and go home. So this was more on him. He moved from Texas to be with her. He moved in with her. And the relationship was very, very violent. From my understanding, she went to a mental institution from the police station because she said she wanted to kill herself. So the police, see, this is what you call resources. Looking out for your own people. The police took her to a mental institution. The average black person who said they crazy, they want to kill themselves. The police, A, either let them do it. <laughs> Excuse me. Or B, take them to jail and the jail released them back on the streets. Those police officers made sure they got her help. So obviously, she has been released from the mental hospital because she was recorded in the lobby of a hotel. Now, majority of people will make this into a race only situation. And race does have a lot to do with it, but there's other things at play like decision making. A grown man should know not to move to another state and move in with another woman. Have your own shit. If something goes left, you can leave. You don't want to leave when things go left and you have to go to a hotel. You rather go to your own place. Decision making. And he put all of his marbles in one basket. He said, listen, this is going to work with her. Till death do us part. And he's no longer here. She took him out. And she will have another black boyfriend. Y'all can call this white girl crazy all you want to. You can talk about her all you want to. You can call her a murderer all you want to she will still be able to get her another black man a black man with money a black man that is successful in cryptocurrency the judicial system let her off the hook and black men will let her off the hook lord it is good to be a white woman in america the judicial system will let her off the hook. The police already let her off the hook. And black men will let her off the hook. Imagine if that was black men in the lobby recording her. It would have been a different conversation. It would have been a conversation like, hey, baby. If looks can kill, hopefully his family can get the answers that they need, the closure that they need. Regardless, you have to notify deceased people's family. I'm sure he had ID on him. I'm sure they had his information. So that will do it for this one. Another tragic interracial dating story and there's more to come i'm out peace